You've got one in five of us who speak languages other than English at home. At least a quarter of us are born overseas. One in two of us have one parent born overseas. Roughly one in 30 of us have Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander background. When you're, when you're wanting to solve problems for a country with that kind of background, but you've only got one kind of background person in the room, how are you possibly going to make sure that your clients, your customers, your audience are all catered towards? Whether you look at the Australian Parliament or our state parliaments, you look at the boards of big listed companies, you look at the bench in terms of judges, you look at the media, it just doesn't appear to be as reflective of the community or as, as diverse as it, as it could be and should be. So there's a representative argument, but there's also a contribution uh, argument to, um, to, to diversity. The value of diversity is um sitting around, avoiding groupthink, so people around the board table providing different perspectives, fresh perspectives. We all have different lived experiences and bringing that to the board table just provides that, that extra thinking that nobody had thought of before. Well, fundamentally one, we don't have a choice. We are a culturally diverse country. What do we want to do with this? You know, we can't turn back the clock. Even if we stop in my, in migration process today, we're fundamentally a diverse country. How do you share those common values? Educating, working through the system, engagement. So you can deal with that basic level. But we've gone beyond that and saying that's all there is. It's more to do it because we believe fundamentally it's the right thing to do. Diversity makes our decision making better. And it does so because if you've got a group of people who are all from the same background, share the same assumptions and think the right way, you're going to have more blind spots emerging. You're going to have uh, leaders and groups who miss things that they otherwise might pick up. There was this really great quote from Lydia Thorpe. I saw her speak once. She was the first Indigenous politician, in fact, in, in the lower house of Victoria. And just her being there meant that many of the politicians had to talk differently about Indigenous issues. They it was, it was uncomfortable for them to suddenly find that they could not just say what they would usually say about Indigenous Australia because now there was an Indigenous Australia inside the room. And that's what we need more of. We need, you know, every politician respecting every kind of Australian that's there. And it's a lot easier to respect them when they're on the same um, level playing field. Many of the large unicorns in, in the US have been founded by engineers of Indian uh, descent. And they're also CEOs of some of the largest uh, uh, and most innovative tech companies in the world. But yet you have um, you know, in very bright Indian engineers in Australia, some from the same, very same universities that you know, uh, created these other engineers that chose to go to the United States and they've just languished at low-level jobs if they've even got jobs in engineering. We have many people driving taxis and so on. And it's a huge loss and a huge waste. If those voices, if all voices, if any vaguely significant part of the Australian population are not heard and not part of national conversations, then um, it's a really big problem for us as a country. It's, it's intrinsic that diversity is going to bring you different thinking. Um, it's going to challenge that status quo, it's going to help your country evolve or help your company evolve and help you innovate and be creative and be a company for the future, right? Be a country for the future. Um, if we're not using all of that talent and brain power in a country, then we're losing out.